So let's agree for the sake of the next conversation that Donald Trump uses the most colorful language of any president, at least in the modern era, and says some of the most questionable things. And that is where our next guest comes in. John McWhorter is a linguist. He has a PhD in the field. He teaches at Columbia, and he has written extensively, and he too is colorful when talking about Donald Trump and specifically how this president talks. That's why we talked about it with John McWhorter. Professor, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Brian. I've been wanting to ask you, what is your linguistics definition uh, of this president? <laughs> Donald Trump linguistically is unadorned. This is the basics. This is what language was undoubtedly like when it first emerged among people who didn't have writing and were first getting their verbal sea legs. This is where it started. And so in that way, as in so many others, Donald Trump is an original. That would mean that education and schooling has had no effect on his use of language, he's quick to remind us that he went to the best schools. Mm -hmm. And he learned nothing in them. He speaks like someone who paid no attention to one of the goals of education, which is to refine our natural inborn proclivities of speech, which are great for casual circumstances. But he uses those same ways of speaking in what most of us used to consider formal and important circumstances. I think in your line of work, they call it a tag. When something is added to the end of the traditional sentence, so often he will tag a sentence with, believe me, believe me, an enforcer, something he thought was lacking in the original sentence. Mm -hmm. It's that he's reinforcing, and also he's using oral speech, where what we're always doing is we're checking to see that the other person understands what we're saying, that they're in the same boat that we are. So that's what you know is. That's what things like LOL can be in texting. He does that too, but once again, it's not in texting. He's doing it in formal circumstances, which means that he never leaves the realm of the casual when he speaks, which is unlike even, say, indigenous societies, where there's no such thing as reading or writing yet. There's always a high way of talking and a low way of talking. The chief doesn't just get up and run his mouth. Ours does. Um, there's a friend of our broadcast, Eli Stokels, who uh, works for the Wall Street Journal, who has covered him now for some time, and says about Donald Donald Trump, there are visual and audio tells that he peppers his speech with, where if you know what's coming, you know what's coming. I want to run a, a montage of a Trump phrase, people don't know. And uh, in Eli Stokel's reading of it, people don't know for Donald Trump means, I just learned. Here's the examples. <laughs> France is America's first and oldest ally. A lot of people don't know that. Our first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, ran his first campaign for public office in 1832. Great president. Most people don't even know he was a Republican, right? Does anyone know? A lot of people don't know that. People don't realize we are an unbelievably divided country. But now I have to tell you, it's an unbelievably complex subject. Nobody knew that health care could be so complicated. <laughs> so you're laughing. Why? Well, that aspect of him, I can't say anything particularly linguistic about it. It's because he has this need to be the alpha male. That business of most people don't know this is coming from that same well. The idea is that he's always the one who's one step ahead. And in that, frankly, I don't find him linguistically challenged as much as just somebody who's rather oddly adolescent for somebody who's a senior citizen. What about his other favorites? Uh, believe me, and uh, more than ever before, or more than we've ever seen before? <laughs> well, some of that is because they're really only, I, I'm sorry to say it, but there are only so many thoughts. And so often he's speaking, and I think he runs out of new insights, and so he covers it with things like, believe me, or it can't ever be that something is bad, it's very bad, or very, very bad. Those are his equivalents of roughly um, or scratching his head. I think that often the content of what he's saying is much slimmer than the bulk, the bulkage of the verbiage that he spews out. He's 71 years old. Uh, he is now president in an age of uh, instantaneous real-time fact-checking. He is not used to his kind of ad-lib superlatives being fact-checked in real time. Do you <laughs> think he's 
bumped up against that dynamic? Yeah, it's unfortunate because I don't think he's going to change in that way. He simply has no deodorant wearing Sunday best way of speaking and that includes that you have to have a more responsible sense of truth than when you're just BSing with your pals. When we speak casually all the time we say things where maybe if we checked up on it things might be different. He doesn't understand that if you're president of the United States you can't just talk. It looks like you're just talking because you're moving your mouth and vibrating your vocal cords but there's this other art that you're supposed to master. He wasn't interested in that sort of thing say in school this is somebody who is numb to the artful he has a rather narcotic joy in dismissal and belittlement rather than building and decorating and so he's going to keep running up against that wall he doesn't understand that when you're president you have to think about things such as what we might call truth conditions in linguistics is what you're describing the intersection of narcissism and linguistics. That is beautifully put. He is what happens when you get somebody who is extremely artful and also I think it's safe to say I don't think he's insane but clinically narcissistic and talking all the time to us in our houses about serious things and that's what's so striking about listening to this person talk. What's unfortunate is how much we've had to listen to it but I don't think that we should be under any impression that it's going to change because we're in an informal era. In a way he's a product of something that's been going on since the mid 60s and in many ways it's in good ways. The fact that in America you and I both would have had to wear worn fedoras and suits even on hot summer days. Thank God God, that's gone. But something else that left was the sense that you put speech in its Sunday best. All of us nowadays at least fake it to an extent. But we could have predicted that somebody was going to come along who really just didn't even bother to do anything but talk rather than speak and could even become president of the United States. I don't think that Trump is going to be last in that regard, the oratorical regard, hopefully the other things. But oratorically, he's the beginning of something new. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.